A quote from Brian Cox. When we look into space, we look directly at our own origin. We are children of the stars. Brian Cox knows that before the Big Bang, there was something terrible. It is difficult for ordinary people to imagine the enormity of the condition that gave rise to everything we know today. Stars, the Milky Way, millions of other galaxies, and ultimately, ourselves. The renowned astrophysicist tries to explain this incredible state of the universe before his birth in a simple way, and his solution can even explain who we are. Where do we come from? Who are we? What are stars, and what were they created for? These questions have been driving people since they have been able to think. We are standing here on our tiny globe, which, compared to the previously known size of the universe, is not even a speck of dust and we are trying to understand what it all means. We look billions of light years into space with telescopes, and instead of answers, more and more questions arise. It almost seems as if the universe is trying to elude our research, or as if it is constantly answering our questions and we are simply not able to see these answers. Brian Cox shares the view that our cosmos in its entirety is still a great mystery. But the British scientist is also certain that the universe is definitely explorable and that it's not all that difficult to uncover the secrets of this seemingly infinite space if we look closely. Was there really light in the beginning? A quote from Brian Cox. Light is the only connection to the universe. Have you ever wondered if the Bible and science have anything in common? Both want to explain to us how the world was created what rules apply in it, and who we ourselves are. The Bible says that in the beginning there was God, and He created the world out of nothing in seven days. In the universe of the Christian God, it quickly became light and bright. But science doubts this. If we believe the currently valid standard model of cosmology, there was no light at all in the universe for hundreds of thousands of years. For this reason alone, Scientists long believed that we humans would never be able to see the beginning of the universe. The reason for this is quite simply that we can only perceive light. Our telescopes filter light traces that have been traveling for billions of years and assemble them into images. Where there was and is no light, our telescopes cannot see anything either, and we cannot explore it. If the Big Bang took place in the dark, and it was dark for eons afterwards, we would never be able to see these apochs. But now, the James Webb Space Telescope has shown us something different. This marvel of technology looks back an incredible 13.6 billion light years in time for us. And thus, it moves very close to the threshold of the Big Bang, which is thought to have occurred about 13.8 billion years ago. Now comes the first shock, because Webb should not actually see anything in an apoch 13.6 billion years ago. This apoch was supposedly the Dark Age. There was no light and therefore no matter and nothing for us to observe. But Webb's images show us rows and rows of bright and beautiful galaxies. So there was indeed matter, and it was already astonishingly well developed at that time. So far, there is no trace of a Dark Age, and we have to ask ourselves whether our science is really right when it claims that the universe came from nothing and then it was dark for a long time. Were light and matter there earlier than we thought? And is the Bible somehow right when it claims that the light in the universe was present very quickly or even from the beginning? To understand this, we first have to look at what light actually is. Before the Big Bang, there was light. A quote from Richard Feynman. If quantum mechanics has not shocked you to the core, you have not understood it. The great mathematician Albert Einstein was the first to describe the nature of light. He believed that light consists of individual photons, each of which collides with electrons, exciting them and thus generating visible light through electromagnetic waves. Light is therefore created as a kind of force through rotation, friction, or collisions. Now, we have to realize that these processes occur at all known subatomic levels. Quanta and even smaller particles fluctuate, which means that they appear and disappear again. They interact partially with each other, or they are connected to dimensions that we have not yet understood and explored. 
All these processes are movements and dynamics that generate waves and radiations. If rotations, frictions, and collisions are also generated here, a kind of radiation and thus a form of light will also arise. Only these light waves move outside our normal ability to perceive them. Richard Feynman was one of the first quantum physicists to understand the true extent of this science. Quanta are the basis of all matter, not the Big Bang or impressive material phenomena such as stars or planets. All things are made of tiny particles that fluctuate and shine. These particles are uncanny or even shocking because they behave entirely irrationally. Quanta only form fixed states when they are observed. Otherwise, they remain in a state that we can describe as unformed potential. Until they commit, they can be this or that. And the really creepy thing is that they theoretically retain this status even while they form a fixed form. A quantum that becomes the building block for a table and forms this fixed form as long as we observe it also retains the potential to be a chair, a tiger, or a drop of water. What does this tell us about the origin of our universe and what came before it? This question is easy to answer. Our universe is possibly one potentiality formed into its currently visible shape and form. But at the same time, it is also countless other things, or at least contains the potential for many things. Brian Cox, Before the Universe, There Could Not Have Been Nothing A quote from Brian Cox, the goal of particle physics is to explain to us what everything is made of and how it is connected. Me, you, the Earth, the Sun, and 100 billion more suns. The magic of our science is that it's not nearly as rational as we sometimes think. If we think back to physics class or other branches of science, many of us have good or even terrible memories of numbers, data, and facts in our heads. But real science, and even physics, are far more adventurous than memorizing formulas and numbers. Basically, scientists don't really know that much about the true secrets of the universe. As Brian Cox says, our only connection to the universe is light, but there is much more to the universe than light, and we don't even begin to understand light. Particle physics has its own idea of how to uncover the secret of the universe and also of our existence. The basics are simple. You take a particle and then split it into its component parts until it can't be split any further. The theory sounds good, but the practice is tricky because so far, all known particles can be broken down into even smaller particles. Imagine an atom is a city. Then a quantum might be an orange that lies somewhere on a table in this city. And we know even smaller particles which would then be only some crumbs within this city or the dust that has accumulated somewhere on a table. We cannot even really see atoms, and even our best researchers cannot see the other particles. We only know that they are there because we can observe their effects. No matter how far and deep researchers have looked into these dimensions, they have not found the basis of creation. It's still unclear today what matter really consists of and how it is formed. Matter is said to have originated at the beginning of the Big Bang. At first, there were only loose particles and everything was much too hot and swirling to allow for solid connections between the particles. Then it cooled down and the first chains of particles eventually formed molecules and finally matter. At least, that's what the theory says. Before the Big Bang, there was supposed to be nothing. At least, that's what Einstein's theory of relativity implies. But physicists have now discovered that nothing cannot theoretically exist. But how did they come to this conclusion? In quantum physics, it was shown that a particle can never be completely disintegrated, killed, or destroyed. The information that formed the particle always remains present. Consequently, nothing could have existed before the Big Bang. At least the information that later formed the universe must have been present. Now, of course, we can ask further questions such as where this information came from. Quantum scientists explain this with a quantum fluctuation, which in plain language means that an infinite carpet of particles existed. The particles emerged, neutralized each other, and then disappeared again. Since no force or thing that we know or can name came into being within this neutral fluctuation, 
This nothingness did not occupy any space either, and no time passed. Nevertheless, the nothingness was everything and much more. Within the fluctuation, not only the potential for our universe as it is existed, but also for countless other universes or things, spaces, and dimensions that we cannot imagine. The thought that there were countless other variants of what we know today as the universe is outrageous. Imagine a cosmos in which everything is pink, in which matter flows instead of being solid, in which only thoughts exist or time runs backwards. These are just four variants of sextillions or countless more. But why did our universe come into being? And why did we humans come into being who don't know how the universe works? These questions can drive us to the edge of our minds, and perhaps we have to go beyond these limits to truly understand the true nature and diversity of our universe. Subscribe now and don't miss any new video.